here. <laughs> oh yeah. Cam is doing some development work on our Spintron right now. We have a cylinder head flow bench area. This build bay is actually what we call our roughing bay. We do have some areas. Some things we're not allowed to show you guys. Yeah. No pleasure. I ain't here to make friends. Big stepper. Hey, bad guy, heat ledger. Ready for whatever. I'll be front and center. Don't fly too close to the sun. Your body chopped up by propellers. Came in, came in arrogant, but left out in the stretcher. Fuck the comparison, y'all know y'all couldn't replicate it. Chilling in the desert, I'm good under pressure. Stick around when we hold it down, look at what we found. It's a marathon, not a sprint, let's go 100 miles. On the cut. Yeah, just shut that generator off. Then we can shut this door right now. What's going on, guys? Uh, so we're here at Noonan. We're here in Spartansburg, South Carolina. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of give a little look over real quick. Um, we've got this new engine set up. We're working with a new rock arm set up. So um, we ran it this past weekend. We're gonna go through. We're here with the guys, um, Daryl and Barry. And uh, this is who I order all my parts from, who's who I speak with all the time about if I have any issues. So basically, we're just gonna look everything over and get ready for North Carolina this weekend. Let's take this front end off. Yeah, he's grabbing me some tools. Do, 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 do. Wait till we show y'all the inside the shop. How nice it is, powder. Let him know how nice it is. You can say uh, I've never seen something so clean. Like, Dude, tires. At, do you want to how I can like put it into like perspective? You ever been to like a carnival or like a state fair or any kind of amusement park and you know they got that the the ride where you walk through all the glass and you don't know which way to go yeah and you just run in the glass i've done that it's kind of how this is back here too so <laughs> You run out there and tell Jesse to grab me the spark plug wrench too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always in. Everywhere's about open now. Well, America chance they could be bad coming through the door. Yeah. When I was reading last night, it said we got okay. five possibilities. Our internet and stuff's still down. Let's look at them individually. Let's just roll them over and we'll go. We'll just go through. Oh, great. No, come on. Come on through. Right now we set ours at 21 thousandths. A hot? Hot. Yeah. 10 thousandths cold, but I yeah. only set them cold once I, when I first get the engine. Yeah, I really don't have anything. They're all pretty like that every time we do it. And then, like I said, we warm it up. Hmm. Well, let's break that one off and see what we got. They said they did, but that's that's relatively yeah. normal. But that's bigger than what they said they were gonna open it up to. But 
Well, it could be wearing. <laughs> no, it's not point wear. It's round. It's round. Yeah. That's how big they made it. That's a lot of clearance. The one I honed the other day, I put three and a half because that's what it looked like he wanted. Yeah. That's, you put three and a half extra well, that's what or he's you about. put it at three and a half? I put it at three and a half. Yeah. It was one and a half. Yeah. And some was one. The one was one. Cam just warmed the engine up and you couldn't even touch the rock arm. It was so hot. Yeah. Not enough. But then we had an old T&D it was at three and a half. It was cool. So I took one of these and opened it up to three and a half. That's what he's getting ready to run now. Yeah. That's just the uh, Parkinson's coming off of the bee tree. Yeah. So that's okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see where Cam's about ready to run and then um, tell him what we have here. But I mean, as long as that shaft is. Clearance there. Well, I think we'll, we'll take a look at all these, but. We may spin this, what he's got on his car, to see if it makes heat. Yeah. If it's cool, we know that it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's taking it's taken care of. Because he said he added another file, but he's added two. Yeah. Now these ones they sent, we got a razor blade or a knife? Never mind, I got one right here. See if you come prepared. See, now these ones, they weren't doing the whole cutting on the sides or yeah, doing that's, anything. That's the very first one. I could swore I had the shafts in here somewhere. Right here. These were the ones that you had no problems with? No problems with. Oh, I'm sorry. These are these are the ones that uh, that we did. this is the ones that we ran in Texas. And we put about we put about 13 runs on. Now in the beginning we were starting to get messed up, and then we took them all apart, went through, polished them up a little bit, and then we ended up putting about 13 yeah. passes. They look fine. And the side with those right. with those shafts. It was those shafts with these. The shaft measures same size. So guys, basically like what we were talking about earlier, this is a new engine combo setup. I basically, I call it their Gen 2. They've had their original Noonan setup. We'll get, when Barry comes back in here, we'll ask him when they officially started out with their first deal. Barry, when did y'all come out with that first engine? The first 4.9 would have been about five or six years ago. And y'all never, never did nothing with it. No revision, no nothing. Didn't really have so to. So like this is your first revision. Pretty one. much, yeah. Yeah, so basically what they do now is, now it's a one piece intake. Um, it's a different valve and a different style head. When I say different style head, if you can look down there by the exhaust, you can see how it's a little bit taller. And what helps out for us is, is that whenever you would take the valve covers off, you'd get a little bit of oil that would leak down. So it allows the oil to stay inside there. They do run a different intake valve on it now. And then like I said, now it's a one piece intake where the other intake had a two piece deal. You always had to bolt it on, which it worked good but now it's just a one piece deal. And I actually think this is a little bit shorter now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, so before with the, the top plate, you, uh, with the smaller style belts, like the 1600 belt, well, now it I run tight. A, it was real tight. Yeah. I even called them one day. I was like, dude, how do y'all get this thing on here? <laughs> yeah, so now when we drop that down slightly with the, um, with this intake, if you don't run our optional 
uh, restraint plate up top. So like if you're if you're running your blower bag down to the headers, which you are, yep. you don't have to run a restraint plate right here to keep your blower bag on. So that option does drop it down about an eighth of an inch. You can run the shorter belt and it's a little bit more forgiving to put on. Works out better. And it's 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 interesting too. A lot of the changes sound so minute, but even like raising the valve cover rail up, we had a customer that had a different style header flange that was like a two piece thing. Okay. So they were thrashing in between rounds and on the old style head, like you said, the oil would drip down onto the headers. Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't put a towel down and it dripped down in there, it'd smoke. It would smoke. Yeah. So the problem was, even for this one customer, thrashing in between rounds, had to make it like everybody has to do, got to the starting line and the starter cut him off. Because of the smoke. Smoking. So we, we made the we made the decision. It's like you know that's a very simple change that we can make. We never want anybody to miss around uh, over something like that. So we uh, we made that change. But yeah, it's just a, a combination of small tweaks of you know suggestions we've had over the years. But bare bones. I mean, it's, it's so you're good for like another five years before you do another revision. Possibly. Yeah, I don't know. It Never runs know. good. We've been we've been extremely fast with it. Um, it's running good. We're getting another setup. We'll go inside the shop and show y'all here in a little bit. Um, that one is going to be like our outlaw trim. We are going to run it at 125% overdrive. We're going to be running radio versus the world. We're going to try to go 350s with it. So you're going to get to see that coming to the channel here next month. But it's basically the same exact engine. It just has a different set of rods in it, different set of head gaskets. Y'all don't change the pistons, do you? Nope. So pistons stay same. Same pistons. Yep. So, uh, and then like I said, we'll, we'll change the pulleys out on front for overdrive. Like right now with our rule package, we have to run at 98%. You can run at 92% if you wanna run a little bit lighter weight, but with me in the car, I don't, I can't get down to 92% and I think the 98% makes more power. So that's where we run ours is 98. In the pro mod, blood money, we're putting it on radials. We're gonna run radial versus world. We're gonna run at 125% overdrive. We've never ran nothing like that. So I'm really not sure what it's gonna do, but we'll figure it out once we go testing. We're just basically going through checking everything because this is a new setup for them. And I think we probably make the most passes out of almost anybody. I mean, there's, I, I, I average between 110 to 125 passes a year just with mpk not counting the other cars guys so we make a lot of passes so we're just looking at over everything trying different stuff to figure out clearance issues if 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 there is any issues um and moving forward with it right now everything seems to be working good so we're going to get this last little deal here daryl's going to run through look at all of them and make sure we're all good and then we'll load this thing back up we're going to head to modern racing we're going to get stuff situated on the car that i've been wanting to get uh fixed throughout the time and then we'll head on to North Carolina for the second No Prep Elite race. I was up there talking with Renee and them. Daryl and the boys were back here. They got everything looking good. The engine is looking great. Rocker arms are looking amazing. So they are going to get with Manton. We do have three motors. We're gonna get uh, the little small updates and changes that they've been doing. We've just been basically being a little test dummy. And I'm okay with that because it allows them to be able to make sure everything is 100% good moving on for my future engines and other future customer engines. So we're gonna head inside real quick, show y'all their little uh, engine room. It's beautiful. And we'll show y'all the new motor that I just purchased. We have a, a new 4.9 Hemi coming. It's identical to this one inside uh, Bad Blood and the one that's inside Prenup. I now have three of them, Todd has one. We're getting everything situated other than this motor is gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna be running an outlaw trim, 125% overdrive, all the boosts that it can take, and we're gonna see how fast it can go. So Barry, explain to them real quick how to zoom out. The drawing has the, 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 drawing the, has the right number. Of 10, 11, so this 11, is a Stemtron. Basically, yeah, this is a tool that NASCAR, Formula One, and all those guys have been using for years, but this will spin the valve train of an engine like it's running. So you're opening and closing valves and it's actually simulating a drag racing pass. So you'll hear the RPMs change as it's going through a run like a shift of gears. A 
That's crazy. I wonder what 9,000 sounds like. Uh, Bing to 11. You did what? Bing to 11. How's that? What's that feel like? <laughs> so keep in mind, this thing's not firing. No. At all. So when you think about it, like the noise going from it's valves open and shut off. So, especially like a turbo car or the blower car is loud. So like a turbo car, you think most of the noise you're hearing is valve train noise. It's not actually the explosion in the chamber. It's a lot. They got him. Yeah. They really got him. What's that? They got him. Oh yeah. You forget that it doesn't have tubes in the back, and when you pull on it, it goes. You don't have any valve train on the other thing, right? Just this one cylinder? You think all that noise you're hearing is just from that one hole? That's crazy. Well, it sounds, I mean, it sounds like a running engine. I, I've not heard one with everything on So you get to just try other stuff and see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. So you, you can kind of view this as like a, a step before an engine dyno. So you can test all your valve train components before you have to actually fire the engine on a dyno. Crazy how technology comes. Yeah, hey. So he just takes it apart and checks it to make sure everything's good? Yeah, we, he's, just, he's checking, you know, seeing if it gets, it's getting hot and just seeing what the differences are between one or the other. And then they'll pull everything off to measure the, uh, the bores of the rocker arms, pins, seeing how everything's wearing. I mean, you could literally, you could set a rocker arm on this thing, program the computer to say, I want to do 100 laps and it'll just sit here and run on repeat. And uh, do a lot of durability testing that way. Oh yeah. But most, most where this tool started, like in NASCAR, was fine tuning camshafts. So getting everything optimized exactly where you want, seeing if you're lofting or if you're coming down hard on a ramp, that kind of stuff. It's pretty badass, I know a lot. You can really get deep down the rabbit hole of what's going on. Hey guys, this is Barry at Noonan Race Engineering. Justin's here. Um, we're gonna do a quick walkthrough and show you guys our tech center. It's a pretty cool spot. It's a little bit like a dungeon right now. So the reason being, Cam is doing some development work on our Spintron right now. And it's actually pretty wild to think, but <clears throat> a lower light setting and you have the room lit up, you can actually see what's going on faster on the screen. So. Uh, we, we do have lights, just sometimes we turn them off for technical reasons. We have a cylinder head flow bench area where we'll do R&D, test uh, new cylinder head designs, and then we start coming into our different build bays. This build bay is actually what we call our roughing bay. So when we have a new engine that's coming together, it'll come in here. This room is quote unquote dirty. We'll file rings, check clearances, do all that kind of stuff, and then everything will get clean. And then it will pivot into this room here, which is our final assembly room where Justin's hanging out. And this is actually an engine that we're getting ready for him for, uh, for his next race car. We'll finish build everything in here. Uh, and then the next room down is our cylinder head room, which has a couple of special projects in it. We do have some areas. Some things we're not allowed to show you guys. Yeah, sorry. We've got PRIs coming up in a couple months. So we've got a couple of areas we can't show you right now. You'll just have to stay tuned on what we've got cooking. But um, this is our tech center. It's a really great facility. It's, um, it's a collaborative effort of a lot of hard work. This was an empty warehouse two years ago. Jamie and the boys did pretty much everything except for the tile work and the center blocks for all the dyno rooms by themselves. So Imagine if somebody walked in here with NFCs on their hands. Ugh. Be all bad. It's very yeah. nice in here though. The, the thing that'll get you, I'll tell you, because I've done it, 
you'll be walking through here texting somebody like if Justin's blowing I me up about where my parts are, I'll right just into boom, it. right in the glass. I told her, remind you of like a, a carnival or whatever where they got the little glass doors you can walk through. Yeah. And you just run right into them. Got a rod. I knew that was our other one. I figured, I have that. Oh no, the hole's on the other side. But I think you can go, I think you can look through it, Potter. Yeah, you can. You look to the other side, like you can see my hand over here. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was a really bad one. We uh we knocked the rods out. Uh this engine. Where was it at? Uh World Series of Pro Mod. That block is so been out of shape. We tried to sledgehammer this camshaft out. Won't come out. It is so Yeah. Anytime it windows in this area, it's it's done. So it would have been good. Well, this one had a couple things that filled in. Hughes had one hole that went all the way up here. Hughes had one hole that went all the way up here. That would kill it. Um, if you just had one hole that did this, like if this was the only spot, it'd probably be savable. But since it did it in a couple of different spots yeah. and it bowed up real bad, that's kind of what did it. That's pretty bad. Like y'all, like if it was just that one area right there, y'all could fix that? This? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be, that's about as bad as you would ever want to fix. If you just had that one right there. Well, we had a couple of sections. Yes sir, get back, yes sir, get back under it. Yes sir, that's it there. off you just set the front end over here right by the other one we're here at modern guys welcome back to another video on the channel start off can't thank y'all enough for buying all the merch you know liking our videos dropping comments that's what allows us to keep going we also are going to get a new look at Sir Vincent that's the Lexus that I had CJRC build me and I ended up selling it to Todd Hormone Logics, one of our big sponsors. He wants to go ahead and get into racing and running MPK and some radials. So we're gonna go around, we're gonna look at his car a little bit. We also get to see if the color matches between Bad Blood and Sir Vincent. What are you thinking? It matches. Uh, <laughs> this is the first time we get to see, you know, the car side by side, and the colors actually do match. So I'm happy with that. Uh, Modern them just got done wiring this car. This car is going to be leaving and heading to uh, Glass Life in Atlanta. Shout out to my boy Colin 
for uh, getting us hooked up with the PPF, the paint protection, and getting everything ready. You know, uh, once that car, once this gets done with him, then it'll get delivered back to the house. By then, we should be done with No Prep Elite in about two to three weeks. And then I'm gonna finish putting this car 100% together, getting it fired up at the house, and getting it ready for Todd. I can't wait to send him my bill. Um, so, you know, I'll get everything done. Me and the boys will knock everything out and then we get to send him a bill, you know. So uh, we'll see how everything plays out, but I'm extremely happy with it. Car came out badass. They got everything ready. It looks good. I'm extremely happy. So what are we doing with bad blood here today? So I wanted to bring it over here. I'm gonna change my parachute handle out. It's getting a little wobbly over the years. Uh, or over the years, sorry. I got plenty of cars. So this is the first year out with it, but you know, I'll be pulling them shoots hard. I'll be pulling them a lot. So um, just gonna be messing with that. We gotta put some new bags on the parachutes. Um, we do have one break that this has never happened to me. It seems like it's getting warmer, it's getting hot. So you got guys that don't check shit. Just when it breaks, they'll just come to me and they're just gonna say, hey Justin, it's broke. Where do you put fluid right here? Right here. I would think that's where the cap is. Hey, man. <clears throat> Can't put fluid in it now with it. I mean you could probably touch it off a little bit. But you gotta wait till it gets all the way back down so it gets all the wool back in. That bitch needs some fluid. Yeah, look at you. When it breaks, when it breaks, you probably got guys like that too, don't you? When I got it, all kinds of guys. When it breaks, they'll come to you, hey man, it's broke. Instead of like letting you know beforehand. Oh, yeah. Pop like a dead head to pump and knock the pump out. I don't know what's wrong with it. Yeah, that doesn't mean, like, see that right there? Mm -hmm. See how much is digging in? So. This one's fine. Yep. It's like it doesn't float. Right, because the piston's all the way out. And it's pushed the caliper back. Yeah, you need to take the brakes all off. That piston's hung up. So is it fixable? Yeah. Yeah, we got, just gotta read. There's O-rings in there. And Mike can come over and show you how to do it. And then we gotta re-bleed them? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna open it up. You gotta clean everything. But it, you need a rotor. Easy now. See how much that thing, for sure that's why. You got the heat in it. I don't have a rotor, so. You're too hard on the brakes. Dude, I don't even ride my brakes. I'm like the least person that rides brakes. I dump my chutes and I hit the, the exit road all the way to the end at every track. Yeah, yeah, just get that off, get it all apart. We may have a rotor in stock too. Why, is the rotor bad? Oh, it looks like it's too thin. Yeah, out of spec. So what will end up happening is this gets too thin and then it'll start kicking the pads out. There's a speck on the pad and the rotor. See, that's, that's, you know, that's customer service right there. You set the car up and you allow them to come back later on. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> sell them parts. Yeah, that's the idea. Consumables. What did you just do, Bobby? Just patting the parachutes. Changed the bags out. They had a bunch of holes in them. Time for a little maintenance on them. So guys, we're, uh, we got the bags swapped out on the chutes. We are going to take this wheel off real quick because for some reason, this brake over here is getting extremely hot and it's actually wearing wrong on the rotor. The rotor is actually not in spec anymore. So we are going to put a new rotor on the side, but uh, I need to figure out what's going on with this brake and why is it trying to stick and also why is it changing color so that's what we're about to do right now is we're about to take it off this color is supposed to be all black that's supposed to be black but you can tell it's like a bronze color it's because it's getting heat some kind of some kind of way um and it's not the right deal so we're gonna take this off we're gonna look everything over and figure out what the issue is Yeah, that's probably 
No, it's not, it wasn't on the right way. Well, having your brake drag like that ca cause you to lose numbers anyway? Yeah, wouldn't be a lot, but something. No, no, no. So this one over here is 0 0.4, 0 0.45, that one's 0.39. What I noticed is it had so much brake dust on the wheel, I couldn't figure out why. Well, now, if you look at it, for some reason, this piston is kind of like pushed all the way out. I mean, my biggest thing is, is trying to figure out what, and I've always wondered because like this thing always has so much fucking brake dust. And like, I don't ride my brakes hard. I throw my shoes and I coast all the way to the end, but it just, it must drag. And dragging because the piston's too far out. I don't ever check this stuff, so that's why. Yeah, we check it about every race. Really? Yeah. It's about once a year thing though. I, I change them out once a year. Yeah. For some reason I've been having issues. You can see how dark it is. We just cleaned it last race. It's only got three passes on. You can rebuild those calipers too. You can? In case it's an O-ring sticking or something That's like that. That's what Justin was telling me. So I guess he's going to give me an O-ring deal. Yeah. We'll go through and raise that. Just finished eating. Austin and Justin installed the new handle for the parachute. Justin had his wonked out. A couple of hard pulls later. That thing is all wonky. So they got the new one in, just tested it, everything works. Getting the brakes all situated now. They were sticking a bit, so getting them unstuck in the place. Build them every year. Um or if they look like they're starting to drag or something. But mainly just preventative maintenance. And then we check check the pad thickness and stuff after every race so that might be a little much how much do y'all i mean y'all do quarter miles is a little different but yeah. how often y'all go through pads and shit on the strains um we can all probably get a season out of them maybe maybe more pro stock stuff you could get uh half a season on the lamb and the full season on the strain that would be, uh, just take everything apart we're learning how to do uh uh, brake repair kit. I've never had to do one of these in none of my cars, so it's actually pretty cool to learn how it is. Where'd you put the air in to get the piston on? Yeah. Uh, you were over there, you would have known. Well, he was well, talking to me. Well, if you're not sitting there. This guy's probably. It's pretty pretty simple. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. Does it come with a new piston when you were done, or do you use the same? I use the same piston as long as there's not anything screwed up or marred up on it. That one looks like pretty good. Did you just touch my ass? You know what the back This guy, dude. <laughs> as soon as the camera looked away, too, he, he, he be thinking. He knew what he was doing. Why are you taking photos of me, bro? Just touch my ass. I ain't taking photos of me, dude. <laughs> I look right, I, I turn right around, his phone's looking right up, he snapped yeah. a photo of me. Yep. Yeah. Oh, dude, that is a good picture. Yeah, yeah great photo of you. <laughs> so you're thinking, like, where, you're thinking where the white is? So I could, I could scale that white cloud down a little bit. Basically, we could just do the letter with, like, a, I don't know, quarter inch or eighth inch silver around it. So it'll look cut to shape, unless you want all that silver as the backdrop. Whatever I gotta do to match these colors. So our color is silver black. Yep. So like how you did it. So whatever okay. we gotta do to, to do that. Like even if it has to be like where this is white, if that needs to be silver, and yep. then you could do the red with the red of the car. Okay. You get a new sticker. New sticker on the car. Justin and them, like, dude, they're like a one-stop shop here. They got a paint booth in the back. They got a shop here. They got engines over there. They got wraps up at the front. They got wiring and chassis building over on the other side. So like, that's why, you know, I, I keep my circle small. It's uh, good about it. But uh, we are getting a new sticker put on the car. We'll show you all that later on. We'll get everything done. Um, car is a little 
finger done up right now. If you can see all that, I don't know if y'all can see that on video. Jesse just keeps running around with his greasy ass fingers. Um, cleans it, so I'm just saying. The one that cleans it all the time. Well, so what's the point? This thing must be getting folded in. What? Got the brakes all redone, now putting them back on. <laughs> trying to. <laughs> They're back there trying to figure out what caused it. Oh, still, you can hear them? Yeah, I can hear them back there talking about it. I'm pretty sure it's the lift. <laughs> you I've, were there when we put it on I've the I've seen lift. it happen. That, the lift goes right here. Yeah. I'm saying that the arms, I mean, we were saying we were adjusting them. I came out there when I was in the house. All I'm saying is, that's oh, definitely what did it. And I was over on this side. My side's not We're fucking We're 100% bit. clear on the lift. Because we had like over an eighth of an inch. The More than that. It's, it's very nice. <laughs> He's got powder. He's, He's got, got powder. He's got powder. <laughs> oh yeah. Is this the first time this guy's seen powder? I mean, first time I have seen it. Okay. Has he got tail lights? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, let me see. You didn't put flashers on this car? Mine broke. Oh, dude, that's hard. The fucking. I guess the way it looks. So now, this, this has flashers on like the back, the tail lights. Tail lights. Yeah. Well, that's not the tail Hold up, turn them off real quick. I'm gonna do a real real fast. All right, go ahead. Hell yeah. Got all the work done on Todd's car. Sir Vincent's done. We're backing her up now and she's heading to Atlanta. Where's she going? She's going to Glass Life Atlanta. She's gonna look real fresh. So what's she getting done there? I, I'm pretty sure it's just like a good old plastic clear cut around it that wraps around it. Okay, okay. And it just protects it from getting all the scratches on it. All the rubber and stuff, so. She was here in modern. We're to make this one a non duct tape car. <laughs> Let's see how long that lasts. Put it down in the stop. comments how long you think that'll last. No duct tape on no, Sir Vincent. It's off it's off Hopefully a long time. But everything's done here at Modern now. She's all wired up, ready to go. Is this car light? So we're just sending it off to Glass Life. Get that paint protection put on. So we'll keep the longevity of her life going. Or Let's get her put in the trailer here now. Back straight out the gate. Yeah. Yeah. What if she looks like in the sun? She don't look good. Damn, she looks dusty, but she looks like in the sun. Damn, she looks good in the sun. What do you think? She looks golden in the sun. We need to get your eye colors changed, man. She's red. <laughs> I almost <laughs> like this car better than all the other cars. Think so? Shh. <laughs> Todd's gonna be one happy man when he gets to sit behind this. Twenty inch, twenty footer, twenty inch. <laughs> <laughs> get there. Go ahead and take the front end off. I don't want to make yeah. the. Just take the front. Sure. Them guys are helpful there. Yeah. You know that. Anyways, guys, Todd's car, beautiful masterpiece, modern racing, knocked it out, plumbing, wiring. We are sending it off to Glass Life, and we are going to get the PPF and everything put on it. And then it'll get transported back to my house, the Swan Gang compound. By then, we'll be done with MPK. We'll get there. We're going to be putting that car together, and we're going to be putting a Pro Mod together to run some Radio versus the World. So uh, we got some busy, busy 
days, weeks, months ahead of us. That means just a lot more content's coming out. So if you haven't done it already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are officially 2,000 subscribers away from reaching 100,000 subscribers. We couldn't do this without y'all. I can't, I couldn't race. I couldn't go out and uh, um, be able to travel around without y'all's help. So thank y'all for everything that y'all do from liking, dropping comments, uh, sharing the videos, and just interacting with us as a whole. So thank you guys. I'll see y'all at the next video.